welcome to another episode of the Wood and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Wood and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, today I want to give you a little overview of what's coming in the upcoming March collection. Um, for those of you who are new here, um, I like to do these little previews um, to show you everything we're going to have available in our shop updates, which happen usually once a month at the end of the month, um, where I release all the yarns um, that have been dyed over the last couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, those little previews are just uh, to give you a bit of an idea of how the colors look in natural lighting and um, I feel this is a bit easier to show uh, how the colors really look because yeah, with natural dyes and natural colors it can be a bit tricky um, to photograph them. But yeah, let me just jump right into the preview. Um, the March collection is a very special one um, because not only are we restocking um, our newly released uh, ethical silk mohair base cloud, but we're also uh, launching a new yarn that is a limited edition um, yarn that I've um, like sourced from local wool. So I've witnessed the whole process behind it. And uh, whenever we can have these yarns available, it really feels very special and is very rewarding for myself uh, to see it in a finished collection. Um, first of all, I'll talk you through the bases that we'll have available and give you a bit um, yeah, of an idea of what they're like. So I'll talk about the meter bridge and yeah, how it's been made. And then I'm also going to show you all the colors that will be available. Um, about the new yarn base that's called Heritage, um, I'll have a full-on uh, introduction video that's linked here um, where I talk you through the whole process and show you samples, show you swatches and I've also prepared a little pattern list of uh, suitable uh, patterns that would work with the yarn. Um, so yeah, I'd ask you to uh, watch that video first just so you know um, everything about this new yarn and in this video I'll um, focus on just showing the colorways mainly. So without further ado, let me jump right in. So I've already uh, talked about this in the little intro section, but we are launching a new yarn in this update that is called Heritage. And it is a yarn that's um, produced from wool from a farm that's only 50 kilometers from where I live. And I've actually um, purchased the fleeces, skirted them and uh, shipped them to a mill. So I was involved in pretty much all steps of the process up until the dyeing. And um, I'm very excited about these type of yarns because yeah, it just always fills my heart with joy that I was able to witness um, every step of the process and yeah, curate this yarn truly, if I may say so. Um, and with this yarn, um, we used to do it in a way that we call these yarns limited edition number something because it was mostly pretty small batches that we produced. Um, and with this one, I tried to do things differently because um, over the last couple of years, those limited edition yarns usually sold out quite quickly. And then, yeah, they, they cannot come back in the same way. So um, it was a bit... Um, disappointing for customers sometimes and it was a bit tricky for me to handle. So for this time um, we decided to buy the full shearing of um, the shepherd that provided the fleeces for this yarn and so we were able to um, get a much larger amount. Which is why I decided to split uh, it into batches and release one batch now and one at a later time. Um, and also give it a full name because um, you know, we're not gonna have this only in one shop update. We have it. We'll have it in at least two shop updates, and this is a really special yarn. And so I wanted to give it a name. And because this is um, resembling the north, which is my home. I grew up in the north, and those sheep fleeces uh, were from the north. The sheep grew up in the north as well. Um, and this is all our home here in the north. We I decided to call this one heritage. Yeah, because it's, you know, 
the, this wool comes from where I come from and I just found it very fitting to call this heritage. And also for the first time with these limited edition yarns, um, I was able to get two batches spun up in different yarn weights because, um, I don't know, for those of you who have not been following along for this um, for, for this long, um, I used to have these limited edition yarns uh, from local wool only in one yarn weight and yeah, with the larger batch I was able to um, get, uh, I wanted to offer two. So we're gonna have this yarn in a four ply weight and a DK weight, uh, both being woolen spun at a small family run mill. Um, and the four ply version is a 400 meters per 100 grams and the DK version is 275 meters per 100 grams, which might sound a bit thin for a DK weight. It sounds almost like a sport, but it knits up like a true DK weight because it's a woolen spun yarn and it blooms quite a bit and has a bit more volume than a worsted spun does. Um, so yeah, it's definitely more of a true DK. Um, both weights are a two ply, so two strands of uh, yarn being plied together um, into this beautiful woolly dream of a yarn. The fiber content is 80% um, Scottish mule and 20% Swedish fine wool, um, which results in this beautiful beigey um, tone. And you know that. I just absolutely love to dye on natural colors and not only white yarns. So yeah, I'm really happy that this has this beautiful beige undertone. But yeah, we uh, also decided for this batch um, to kind of uh, create a collection um, where everything can be used together kind of. So um, we decided to dye the same shades on um, both weights all the time, so I'm going to show each shade one more time. And um, we'll have them on both yarn weights, so on the 4-ply and the DK version. Plus we tried to, um, with the second yarn that will be available, the Cloud Silk Mohair, we tried to accompany each color so you can actually combine um, the heritage yarn with cloud silk mohair and there should be um, kind of suitable colors for every uh, shade that we dyed on the heritage yarn. Um, yeah, what else is there to say um, other than this yarn is very special to me and I absolutely love having it available finally. Um, but yeah, that's about heritage. Um, as mentioned, we'll have all shades on both yarn weights. And yeah, I guess that's everything I have to say intro-wise. And now I'm just gonna show you um, all the colorways. So let me start showing you the colorways. The first one you already saw, uh, this one is the undyed heritage yarn in its true undyed state. This is only from Natural Sheep this color and I actually love this so much and it's actually um, the colorway that I um, knit, not I knit, my mom knitted actually, but that we made the um, Zakuri cardigan with. I'm going to show this more in depth in um, the introduction video about heritage, but this is the natural undyed shade, how it looks knitted up. It's just the perfect neutral kind of beige, I feel, and it works really well with a lot of other colors. And so I decided to make um, a big batch of this um, natural color available, um, because I also feel it's very um, easy to combine other colors with this one. Am I getting dark? Let me see if I can brighten this up a little. Um, but yeah, I think this is a great base color to combine with pretty much all the other shades that we've dyed. Um, and now, without further ado, let me show you the shades that we created. Oh, now it's getting really bright again. Okay, this was a bit unnecessary. Maybe like this? Um, so the first colorway is actually an old favorite that we're bringing back. We didn't have this one in stock for very long. Um, 
and this is the colorway Mountain Rose and it's a cool dusty kind of pink that I really like um, and that has been around for I think it was one of the first colorways I ever created so it's actually quite special um, Next up we'll have another pink and this one is a new one um, but I really love this and it's yeah I'm, I'm really craving um, to knit myself something out of this colorway. So this one is pink clay and it's a dusty but slightly warmer beigey pink in comparison to Mountain Rose and it works really well on the warm beige base color of this yarn I feel. Let me show you the two side by side. So this is Mountain Rose and this one is Pink Clay. So yeah, a bit more of a coolish pink and a warmer earthier kind of pink. Um, speaking of earthy shades we have another brown um, and this is a new colorway called deer like um, yeah the deer running in the woods because that's what it reminded me of so this is a warm reddish undertoned brown next up we will have one that I think it debuted in the last shop update if I'm not mistaken and this one is called Blackberry and Blackberry is something between a dark brown and a dark um, berry tone. It's very versatile and it really shifts with the light which I find so interesting and I think this one is so beautiful contrasting with these two like this in the middle we have the uh, we have the undyed heritage and on the right we have pink clay I love this combination so much um, but yeah in general blackberry is a great contrasting color with pretty much everything um, so if you're looking into a color work project I think this one has a lot of contrast with a lot of the lighter colors so that's what I really like um, and speaking of color work um, with heritage being a woolen spun yarn it's actually uh, very suitable for color work so I can definitely recommend uh, considering a color work project in this yarn um, Staying in the slightly moody uh, region of colorways, uh, we will also restock our colorway Moorlands, which is like a grayish green that also has a tiny hint of purple. I don't know if you can see. It's very hard to capture on camera because it pretty much shifts between the grayish purple and the green. And last but not least, we'll have our colorway shell. This one has been a classic a couple of years ago, I think, um, as well. And I haven't had this for a while, but um, I think it's a very nice base color as well that goes with a lot of the other shades. So let me compare it to the undyed version because, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty much a coolish beige and you would think it's very similar to the undyed and it is similar but it still is different so you can see that it's a bit more it has a bit more of a purple pink tint to it which I also like with the blackberry because it kind of is the same color family of this purpley type so I think it would go really well in a color work. Now I'm dreaming up too cool sweater by 
uh, YHN of the Petite Netter. Uh, I think I've included that one in the pattern suggestions list in um, the intro video about heritage, but I think this was would be such a pretty combo for that one. Or maybe even um, the undyed and the deer colorway, because I feel this is a very uh, the Petite Netter style <laughs> color combination, if you ask me. So, but yes, those are all the, let's say, standard colorways on Heritage that we'll have. And now I'll go over to another color family. And if you've been um, checking out my Instagram recently, you might have seen that these uh, skeins have been dyed in collaboration, kind of, with a friend of mine who's called Viola, and she's uh, a natural dyer herself uh, with the label Atelier Fon and she um, mainly dyes fabrics and clothes and um, homeware and pretty much um, a lot of linen and natural natural textile, uh, natural fiber textiles um, but it was the first time that she has ever handled um, something woolen so it was awesome because we met um, and we decided to dye in her big um, vessel that she has for indigo dyeing um, and it was a really exciting experience because um, that vessel is really big and it's actually um, like it's heated by wood um, and fire so I really thought this is a very natural kind of way of indigo dyeing. Um, and the thing with this yarn is that it's extremely voluminous. So with my current setup, um, I would not have been able to dye proper batches. Um, like I could have dyed maybe five at once. Um, so it would have been really difficult to dye large enough batches to include or not to not exclude uh, someone because of someone's sizing. And that's always something I really focus on that I don't. Um, exclude anyone um, in the size of the batches I dye because you know if I can only dye five skeins or 500 grams um, at once then that might not be enough um, for a sweater for um, certain sizes and I would never want to exclude anyone because of that and so it was really cool because we were able to dye larger batches at once um, in that big vessel at Viola's place um, and I'm incredibly happy because not only has this been um, so rewarding to see the finished colors, but it was also such an enjoyable day because, you know, sometimes this whole small business life can be a bit not lonely. Lonely is not the right word, but, you know, it's a niche that I'm in with my business. And sometimes um, I lack a bit of... I don't know, exchange with like-minded people and I mean it's lovely to chat on Instagram and it's lovely to have you know some voice messages every now and then but truly working with someone hand in hand who knows um, the craft as well as you do and to be able to exchange thoughts and you know just enjoy the process of doing it all together it was it was a lovely experience and um, yeah I can't wait to go back and dye more yarn with Viola and experiment with more new techniques because she really also inspired me to try new things um, and to maybe broaden my horizon about techniques and dye stuffs and she's very knowledgeable about um, special dye techniques especially with indigo and yeah I cannot wait to um, experiment more with her because Sometimes you just need someone to push you a little bit and into trying something new. And that's definitely how I feel we, we inspired each other with um, trying new things and new materials. And yeah, it was just very lovely. But let me stop rambling about it and show you the colorways. Um, with these indigo dyed colorways, I know some of them are very similar, but we dyed... Um, them all in kind of a gradient and even though you might not see a big difference between them we will still have them in the different let's say um, colorways because I would not want you to have 
something that's mismatched or so because yeah we were trying to keep these very separate because some of them are similar due to how the process works but have not been dyed in the same batch and I only want to dye um, I only want to sell each batch uh, um, with only the skeins that have been dyed in one batch um, and not mix them up so yeah some of them might look similar but they are all different batches and Another disclaimer uh, for those of you who are new to indigo dyed yarn, um, indigo works different from other natural dyes and it doesn't bind to the fiber in a, let's say, um, molecular um, chemical way, but it more in a physical way because the molecules, um, okay, how deep am I going into this now? But it's um, that the the indigo pigments have to be um, reduced or have to be put in a certain environment where they can be become smaller then they the fiber is immersed and so the the indigo pigments can penetrate the fiber molecules and with or I don't know if it's even molecules don't quote me on those <laughs> um, exact words um, but you know you know what I mean and then when you pull the yarn out and it is exposed to air it oxidizes and the indigo particles let's say it like that they expand again and they are trapped in between um, the fiber um, you know the fiber structure of the yarn and um, with this way it's not a chemical bond but it's more a physical bond of um, the indigo pigments with the fibers and that's why something so-called crocking can happen. Crocking is when you ha you're you using an indigo dyed skein and you're applying pressure and warmth uh, by knitting with it and your fingers might turn lightly blue. Um, that's perfectly normal because that's just excess pigment that's coming off or out of the fibers and uh, that's just something that's normal for indigo um, to happen. Um, and if it happens, don't worry, you can just wash it off with a little bit of soap. It's not a problem. And believe me, I have skeined a lot of indigo <laughs> skeins, and I think, not skeining is not the right word, twisted them. And I don't think you can put any more pressure on a skein than if you twist it. And I actually ended up having a little blue hands after maybe 50 skeins or so. So I think we did a pretty good job at rinsing all the excess, but just be aware that this is a normal phenomenon that can happen to indigo dyed yarn. Um, it should not be major, though. We really paid attention to neutralizing and uh, rinsing the skeins properly, so that should be fine. Also, you will receive um, a little card, uh, info card, with every indigo dyed skein um, where all this info about crocking is on there, just so you don't, uh, you're not in shock when you have a little blue finger. <laughs> um, but without further ado, let me show you the shades um, on Heritage. This one is the first one and it's called Indigo One and it's just a very light tinge of blue with a slightly greenish undertone. I'm just gonna name those um, batches Indigo One, Two, Five because, you know, they are not repeatable anyway, so it doesn't really make sense to give them names. Um, then we have Indigo 2, which is pretty similar to Indigo 1, but it's slightly more saturated and slightly less green in undertone. Maybe if I hold them next to each other you can see that the one is a bit more greenish and more like a sea glass kind of shade, and 2 is a bit more, let's say, bluish. But it's quite pretty because the beige undertone of the yarn gives it a bit of a warmth. So it's not like a steely blue, but more of a warmer blue. Then we have Indigo 3, which again is a bit more saturated than the first two. And is a bit more on the greenish side again. This just depends on um, the Indigo vat and how it is set up. Um, how much green undertone there is and how much blue. So these are one, two, and three from the top to the bottom. Then we'll have indigo four, 
which is quite a bit more saturated than the first three. It's like a beautiful jewel toned blue. And last but not least, some of you got really excited about this when I posted it on Instagram. This is, in, uh, this is Indigo 5 and this is the most saturated out of the group. So yeah. I will try and hold them all up together so you can kind of see. So from here to here, I don't know what is left and what is right with the camera, but we have Indigo 1, 2, 5. I hope the light is not blowing out the blue in the lightest ones too much, but yeah, these are the shades all together. And I could not be happier with how these turned out. Um, and what I'm even happier about is that we're also going to have corresponding shades um, in our uh, silk mohair yarn cloud um, that I'm just going to show you in the next little uh, chapter of this preview. So um, the second yarn that we'll restock in uh, this shop update or this collection is our ethically pr produced um, cruelty-free silk mohair yarn cloud um, and this one has a full dedicated intro video as well and I will link that here um, just because it has a long backstory and it was a long time in the making and it is one of the very few um, fully traceable and sustainably produced and cruelty-free mohair yarns out there and I think it's worth um, hearing a bit more about the backstory because yeah it's just I personally as a yarn and wool lover I find it very interesting to hear about those backstories of yarn and just in case you're curious as well it's gonna be linked in the little eye and I'm also going to link it down below um, and without further ado uh, let me show you the colorways so um, with cloud we've tried this time last time it was um, the case that we just dyed a full rainbow just so there is something for everyone because it was the initial launch of this yarn and I wanted I wanted there to be something for everyone um, but this time I actually decided to go for um, having the shades dyed um, matching with the heritage yarn because I think it's going to be very pretty to um, combine the two. And I should also maybe say that um, combining the foreplay version of heritage with cloud results in roughly the same gauge as the DK version. So. Um, in case you're into, um, you want to add a little halo to something or you want to knit a, pro a project that's a bit more, you know, whimsical and has a bit more of a more ethereal and whimsical touch, then you have all the choices of the colors still because you could just combine um, cloud silk mohair with the heritage four ply. Um, we don't have exact matches for every colorway, I should maybe say that. <laughs> But uh, we did our best to have something to match pretty much every shade. Um, some even have more than one match. <laughs> but let me show you... But let me first show you um, the indigo dyed mohair um, skeins because um, yeah, I can maybe also hold up the shades together just so you can have an idea of how they look. Because even though we dye set, um, the same shades on the same basis, first of all, natural dyes always, always, always turn out different every time because they are not like really completely repeatable like um, an artificial dye would. Um, and we have a beige yarn in case of heritage and a white yarn in case of cloud. So the shades will always look a bit different. But let me stop rambling, I will now show you <laughs> the colors. And the first one is Indigo 1. And this is the lightest of the indigo shades with a touch of a greenish undertone. I don't know if you can see that, but 
that's how it looks if the camera wants to focus. Somehow this camera always focuses on these mimosas over there. I think I have to change my setup a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, these are the two indigo one shades together. So this is uh, Cloud Mohair and this is Heritage. And then we'll also have Indigo 2, which is similar to Indigo 1, but it is a bit more bluish in undertone. Maybe I can show you. Yes, this is Indigo 1 and this is Indigo 2 on cloud. And it's a beautiful icy blue that also comes with a corresponding shade on Heritage. So this is Indigo 2 on Heritage. As you can see, it looks quite a bit different dyed on the different base shades, but uh, with the undertones being the same and they will look good knitted together, trust me. <laughs> um, then we'll have Indigo 3, which is a bit more saturated than the first two were. And the corresponding shade on Heritage. Then we have Indigo 4, which again is a bit more saturated and it also has a bit more variegation on Cloud, I feel. So this is Indigo 4 with its matching shade on Heritage. And last but not least, we'll have Indigo 5 and this is so beautiful on Cloud, I feel. It has a bit of a variegation throughout. I don't know if you can see that, but I think it's so, so pretty. Let me also show you next to its companion Indigo 5 on Heritage. Aren't these just beautiful? I'm completely in love. <laughs> okay, so these are all the shades. Let me try to hold up all the indigo shades on the mohair as well. But look at this little fade of blues. I'm very happy with them. So from here to here we have indigo one, two, five. So, these are all the indigo dyed shades and I really enjoy them and I hope to be able to make more of these batches with Viola in the near future. It was just lovely. Um, next up, let me show you the shades that we've dyed um, apart from the indigo ones. Um, well, the first one is not dyed, but this is the undyed shade. Um, and I wanted to include it into this preview um, because as you can see in the um, video about the yarn, um, my mom also knitted um, or is knitting a shawl um, that's called the, oh, no, I forgot the name. Anyhow, I'm gonna put it somewhere. <laughs> um, and it's um, a, shade, uh, a shawl by uh, Teti Lutzak. And it's, um, she combined the natural, um, the undyed shade of Heritage with um, a strand of the undyed uh, cloud. And it actually turned out very beautiful because the cloud just added a bit more of a lighter halo and made it even more light in color. And it's really beautiful. I'm going to show you um, in a second. Oh, I can make... Hold on, I'm gonna show you a swatch. Okay, I got a swatch and I looked up the name and it's the Javelin shawl. <laughs> Sorry. But this is the swatch and here you can see how the naturally colored undyed heritage looks together with a strand of undyed cloud. I think it's really pretty. 
But not only did we include the undyed cloud um, to combine with heritage, we also dyed a corresponding color that should match even more if you're not into adding like a little contrasty halo but want to truly match. Then we have oat as a match um, with heritage. So this is oat. And we've dyed quite a big batch of this, um, so uh, a lot of people have the chance to combine it with the undyed shade because I think this looks just so beautiful. It's a pretty good match, I would say. Okay, then on to the slightly more colorful shades. Um, let me move on to uh, the one-of-a-kind ones, kind of. Um, so this one is Walnut and it's a warm, cozy beige or brown, if you will. And this one is dyed with Walnut Husks. And since these kind of shades always turn out a bit different despite using the same recipe, the same amount of uh, walnut husks and all that, um, they do turn out a little different. So I do call it walnut, but you know, it's a bit of a one of a kind. And the next one of a kind shade is quite similar to that, just a little different. And this one is just called one of a kind because I dyed this one with red onion skins. And it's like a peachy pink um, beige. Um, and what I found extremely interesting is that, because with onion skins, they are quite sensitive to pH and they are also quite sensitive to the material they are dyed on. And I don't know if you can see that, but for this one, the silk fibers did turn a pretty pink. And the mohair fiber, so this little halo here, almost turned a yellow, golden tone. So you can definitely see that the onion skins did dye the different uh, components of the mohair in a different way, which I find so fascinating. Um, but here are the two shades together. So this is walnut and this is the one of a kind. So you can see there is quite a bit of a difference. So one of a kind is more peachy pink and walnut is more of a true beige. Um, staying in this kind of, let's say, brownish uh, category, we also dyed deer on uh, the cloud silk mohair to match the same shade on Heritage. Um, but you could also, I feel, so that's where I'm coming with, there are sometimes are several matches with each color, so I think you could also combine this one with the Walnut and it would make a very pretty combo. Or even with the one of a kind, which would be even warmer, so I think that's a beautiful match as well. So yeah, next up we'll have a colorway that was very requested um, after the last shop update and this one is Champagne Supernova and it's a very light champagne-y pink. Although I do have a feeling this time it turned out slightly more coolish in undertone. However, I don't have a skein of the last batch anymore, so I cannot really tell, but just from memory. So this is Champagne Supernova, and I know some of you have been confused last time why it's called this way. Uh, that's actually I know Asus song, and <laughs> um, some of you might know, but I actually have a background in uh, cultural culture management and music, um, so that's how I, what I studied actually. And so, yeah, I might one day have to do a collection with my favorite al albums or whatever. But in this case, I just, when I saw the colorway for the first time, I think I first dyed it on Corydale's sock. 
I immediately had the song in my head, so I had to call it Champagne Supernova. And that's how this colorway is going to be called forever now. But yeah, a light champagne pink. And then we have something, I, I might have to hold these up together so you can see the difference. Then we have shell on cloud and this one is supposed to be dyed to match the shell shade on heritage. So it's also a kind of purpley pink almost looking like an opal shade um, colorway and I should maybe hold it with Champagne Supernova because they are quite similar especially in this lighting but if you look at them in real life um, Shell is quite a bit more purple in undertone and Champagne Supernova is more pink but it's really hard to tell in this lighting I'm afraid. However, in real life, Shell is more purpley gray and Champagne Supernova is more of a light pink. So I guess we're down to the last two colorways. One of them being Blackberry, that we dyed um, in order to match with Blackberry on Heritage. I hope this is even helpful that I hold them together just so you can see the matches, but yeah, I don't know. And last but not least, we have Moorlands, which again is shifting between a greenish and a purpley shade, and is supposed to match Moorlands on Heritage, which looks like a weird match on camera, honestly, but in real life, this is much better. However, I think those are, oh no, I think I wanted to show some more matches. So these are all the colorways that we've dyed um, on cloud, but I wanted to show some more matches because I don't think I showed a match for Champagne Supernova yet, no. But I think it would go very well with pink clay. So that's a pretty combo. Or even if you wanted it to be more Coolish and undertone with Mountain Rose. This would be a pretty match as well. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I have now shown all the matches that I had planned. Which doesn't mean that you cannot match the, the colors differently. I mean, it's not a problem. <laughs> it's not my decision. Um, but I just wanted to uh, show that there are some matching colors. And I know it's sometimes difficult to see which one might, might match better. So, um, yeah, I hope this little overview and this little show and tell helped. Despite the always changing light situation, because we have something between blue sky and huge cloud mountains <laughs> so it's a bit tricky to yeah deal with the light today but I hope you can see and you're able to envision um, the matches and the colorways all right I guess I think if I'm not mistaken I have shown you all the colorways yes and um, yeah, now it's only left to chat a bit about admin things. So, um, with this update, we're gonna do something slightly different um, because I will be at the H and H Cologne um, craft fair next Friday. Um, so we're gonna move uh, the update from the regular fr Friday at eight pm to Thursday eight pm. So. The shop update will be on March 30th, uh, 8 p.m. CET. So, yeah, just please don't be confused. I know I, I try to stick to my usual Fridays, but in this case, I'm gonna be at the fair and I'm gonna meet a lot of mills and a lot of uh, fibercraft people. Um, and while I could probably access my computer and everything, I'm just too afraid to just let it work its way, um, you know. I, Pretty, I'm pretty confident that my shop system will work things out, but you never know what happens, so better safe than sorry. So I moved the shop update to Thursday the 30th, 
to 8 p.m. CET and all these shades uh, will be available at that date. Plus we have quite a bit of uh, stock left from the last shop update so um, you might want to take a look at that one as well um, and at the video about the colorways as well. There's not like a huge bit left but uh, we still have quite some of our natural uh, of the naturally colored uh, Shetland Romney 4 ply skeins and all that. Um, so these will just stay in the shop. Um, and shipping wise, uh, because I'm at the fair, I won't be able to ship or to start packing on the weekend. Uh, and so despite the update being a day before, uh, like a, a day earlier than it normally is, um, I won't be able to start uh, packing before the Monday after the weekend. Um, and so please bear with me if it takes a day longer this time because I will be coming home uh, Sunday quite late and I don't think I will manage to do anything um, in the meantime. So I hope you're okay with me uh, packing the things on Monday. I'll do my best uh, to be to ship out everything as quickly as I can though. Um, currently shipping times are quite, let's say, quick. Um, I think um, the not insured trap, uh, shipping method is at um, just a bit over two weeks to the overseas orders, which I find pretty okay. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't take too long at the moment, although things are changing all the time and I should not say that probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how it goes with uh, shipping and admin things and everything. And as always, um, with limited edition yarns, in the past it has been that these have been very sought after and that these went quite quickly, which is also the reason why I got a larger batch this time and I will split the batches these times. Um, but this is the bigger batch, definitely. So, so this is the big half um, that we'll have and then we have another half that I don't know when to release yet either this spring still or maybe in the fall, I'm not 100% sure yet. But what I wanted to say with this is that I recommend you to be on time for the update as I always say if you're looking into something um, particular because we tried to make very large batches of each color and limit the number of colors a little bit just so we could be able to have more per color and um, make the shopping experience a bit more relaxed but still with those limited ones they are just limited and I cannot reproduce them exactly so that's why I would recommend to be on time um, for the update. Um, and then there's only to say that um, I hope the color matching that I showed you helped and I will also recommend to please watch um, all my info videos uh, thoroughly and also watch the video about heritage thoroughly if you're interested in buying um, instead of um, asking questions that have been answered already because that's an issue I'm currently facing where I um, spend the week before an update a lot with a lot of um, answering questions that I've already answered and it's not a it's I mean it's my job to help you choose something and I want to provide the best service I can but with the amount of questions I'm getting it's getting a little bit tricky to handle them all and to get back to you as quickly as I can and so I would just I just want to ask to check out those info videos because uh, yeah most of the info should be in them and if I missed something of course just ask and if you ask, please uh, write me an email because Instagram DMs um, are becoming more and more um, cluttered and it's a bit tricky to keep track of everything. Um, and so if you have a question, uh, please don't necessarily DM me, um, but rather write me an email. And my email is hello at willentwine.com. I'll also link that down below and I always aim for um, answering as quickly as I can and normally I'll answer within a day um, in the shop update week because I know there are quite some questions coming in. So yeah I really hope that this little preview video was helpful um, and that you'll enjoy potentially watching um, the other intro video to Heritage. And then there's only to say that I ho hope you're gonna love this new yarn as much as I do and that I hope you'll find something that makes you happy in this uh, March collection. Um, 
Until then, see you next week, hopefully, and have a good weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs>